Okay. Yeah, that's that's really helpful. I think uh, one one last question for you here is about um, returning to a physical temple. I know uh, different different theologies are looking forward to a new physical temple, and it seems like in Scripture you know, things have been ratcheted up to the spiritual dimension. Um, do you think? I know that you don't think we're going to return to a physical temple. Why do you think that is? Well, there are a number of reasons. Um, one is that the Old Testament temple, Hebrews says, and Hebrews nine especially eight to nine, that the the first physical temples were a parabole in Greek. It uses a parable. Mm -hmm. They were the figurative temples. In other words, they were the shadows. They weren't the real thing. Yeah. And so those physical temples pointed to the real temple, which was in heaven and would come down upon earth, and uh, which was spiritual and will consummately be physical, hmm. but physical in the sense not architecturally, but that the whole cosmos would be God's special revelatory dwelling. Yeah. God will dwell in every nook and cranny of the cosmos. So it's not an architect. Architectural structures can't contain God, as Isaiah 66 says. Right. Who, who, who can build for me a house that I may dwell in? Nobody. Huh. And so... Um, and so that that looks forward to this cosmos dwelling, and so that's one that's one reason. But coming back to the type, the, the Old Testament physical temples were a type. When the type is fulfilled in the New Testament, you don't go back again and expect a fulfillment of the type. Yeah. So when the anti-type comes, that is the fulfillment of the type. It's like reversing uh, the progress of uh, redemptive history. You don't go back, you know, when Christ is a lamb, you don't go back and say, oh, well, they're going to be lambs again. <laughs> and um, um, he's the ultimate priest. You don't go back to they're going to be priests again. Yeah. Uh, that's why you don't repeat a sacrifice. Okay. All these things, when they're fulfilled, they're done. They're unrepeatable. So that's one reason. And I, I give an illustration in that regard of uh, my wife and I, when um, I was studying, we weren't married, but we were corresponding. I was in England, she was in Texas, and we were corresponding and, um, and, and, and um, falling in love through the correspondence. And I had a picture of her. It was with her brother. Yeah. And when I'd get a letter from her, I, I would look at her picture. I got so tired of looking at the brother, I cut him out. But um, I looked at her, who knows? I. I have a friend who hugged the picture uh, of the girl he was writing and, and kissed it. Uh, I may have done that. I don't, I don't remember. Uh -huh. But um, so now we've been married 43 years, got married. And so if I were in our living room and sitting in a chair and I wouldn't sit next to her, she's in a chair across from me. And if I had that same picture and I was hugging and kissing it, that would be really weird. Yeah. I would be reversing the course of marital history at that hmm. point. And uh, I, she, she would say, I need a counselor. She'd probably call her pastor and say, my husband need, needs counseling. He's hugging and kissing this picture, but here I am. Right. Hugging and kissing me. Christ is here. <laughs> He's a temple. Let's hug and kiss him and not some physical architectural structure. <laughs>